My name is Shai Smith. I am so excited to be here on YouTube and share my passion and experience and knowledge about things I love, such as beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. So, but today, we're going to talk about VSG. I could say, you could say that's a part of a lifestyle because it is. It changes your whole lifestyle. Well, let me talk to you about my experience. Well, let's get started <laughs> with the first thing. Um, I had VSG surgery January 28th, 2022, and boy, was it a experience, especially with COVID, you know, COVID messes everything up, but I want to start from the beginning and how my journey began. I first looked into VSG back in 2018 and I was struggling whether or not I, if I should have the surgery or not, but I really wanted to do it. So I went to my first consultation with the doctor that did, that did my surgery back in January. And I went for the consultation and he said, oh, you got to lose the weight and then whatever weight loss um, things have you done. And you know, I was just about everything. I did fentramine. I did... Um, Weight Watchers, I did Jenny Craig, I did Slim Fast, I did like the over-the-counter um, <clears throat> pills, uh, I did like the extreme uh, workout pills uh, that had your heart pumping, I, I did all that. Well, none of that worked. I did lose the weight. But I always gained the weight back. And I got tired of going through the roller coaster, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. And I wanted a permanent solution to it. Although um, VSG is not considered permanent, it's people that gain the weight back. But I feel like if you have to have that mindset and you have to want this bad and stop making excuses for yourself. If you make excuses for yourself and you don't have that mindset and you feel like you're gonna be you're gonna fail and you're gonna starve then you may, that maybe that isn't the surgery for you because going into it and getting into it is pretty extreme. And we'll talk about that as, you know, we talk about, you know, what I had to do as far as insurance. Well, the insurance um, was covered. It was covered by my insurance with my job. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO. Um, it was very unclear in the books and the pamphlets about if they covered it or not. So I had to go and see one of the insurance people. But luckily around that time, um, they had the, you know, he had to renew insurance. You want to add people. And they had that coming around. So I went and I asked one of the insurance agents if VSG was covered within this insurance. And he said, yeah, it's covered. You can go, you know, it's covered. And I'm like, oh yes, thank you. And so with that, I already knew, like when I went to go see the doctor again, um, I believe it was in September, 2022. No, it was uh, September, 2021 that I saw the doctor um, for the surgery. And he was, you know, he was great. I would recommend him to anybody. I'll, I'll, I'll put his his information down below if you stay in the Chicagoland area and is considering VSG surgery. So um, after I was approved um, and everything, I had to go for, I had to see my doctor, get approval from my doctor to have the surgery and the reason why. And I was able, it's, it's always something with getting a, getting a surgery, you have to meet a certain criteria. And this one, I was over 100 pounds overweight. And I also had hypertension, high blood pressure. So that also was a, a, a factor into why I got approved for the surgery. Um, also, with that being said, um, you know, trying to figure out if 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 your insurance is going to pay for the surgery is 
it's like kind of like a, like like a little scare. It's kind of scary because it's like you, you you don't know if you're covered or not, and then your hopes and dreams just just go ugh. And so a lot of people go to like Mexico and other parts of the country to have the the, the surgery, which is a lot cheaper. I understand, but um, I went through my job. I was lucky enough to have insurance that paid for the surgery and everything, and I went through my job. So. Um, after that, uh, all that, I had to have all my medical things up to date. I had to have my pap smear, my mammogram, all those things up to date. I also had to go see a psychiatrist and I had to see a nutritionist, um, which the nutritionist, they, they tell you a lot and things, it, it, it's really great. Um, but my years of weight loss and stuff like that, you know, if you lost weight off and on your whole entire life since she was like 12 or 13 years old, you gain knowledge of, of being a nutritionist, please. You gain knowledge of losing weight because you do so much research to lose weight and you try so many things and you see what's working and you see what's not working and you just gain that knowledge from there. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. <laughs> but anyways, um, I did I I did all that and then I went to the doctor's appointments. I had my EKG done. Um, so uh, they set a date. Early December, they set a date for January 10th was my scheduled date to have the surgery. I was so excited. Um, I started my liquid diet. I went and got gate, sugar-free Gatorade. I got the little popsicles, sugar-free popsicles, sugar-free fudge pops. I got a lot of water. I stayed hydrated and, you know, it wasn't too hard for me to do that because I did some extreme diets, baby. I did the lemonade diet and you know you strong yourself. I did the military diet. I did the three-day water fast. So let me tell you, this liquid diet, it was a treat for me, you know, um, and it was easy for me to do. But someone else that is not used to, you know, disciplining themselves like that. It, 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 it might be hard and I can understand why. Um, so I did the liquid diet. Also on the liquid diet, you can have jello, honey. So you get you some sugar free jello and you'll 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 and chew on it and if you're missing to chew, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, um I did that and I did the liquid diet and it was almost time for the surgery. I, I believe the surgery was the following week. I get a phone call. Uh, we're going to have to postpone the surgery um, because uh, our hospital beds are full. And we don't have any hospital beds. And we will call you and let you know when your surgery will happen with a new date. Y'all, I was so heartbroken. Let me tell you, I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to change my life. I just knew that this was going to change my life. And, um, it did, it did. But after through all that, after all that, after all that mess, um, I went to, uh, like calling the doctor, I'm calling them. Like, is it time? Can I go, you know, looking at the news, seeing if the COVID has, uh subsided like is it getting any lesser or if that's a word is 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 anybody you know getting well is any hospital beds open and voila the end of january they called me and they said are you going to be ready to go get, to get your surgery at any time meaning that i would have to go back on the liquid diet now uh the doctor didn't tell me when he told me, um, basically go back on the liquid diet. I had to call the nurse. I did have to call the nurse and she said, well, yeah, um, still be on the liquid diet. You can have two meals or is it one meal and the, the other two liquid, you know, so I would drink a protein shake at night and a protein shake in the morning and have my meal at lunchtime, which works great for me. I don't know about anybody else, but it works excellent for me. That way I'm not sleeping on a full stomach, which I dislike. Um, so 
Um, I did that. They called me and they said, whenever you're ready to go, we're ready to go. And so I told my supervisor at my job, I'm like, girl, uh, I don't know when I'm having a surgery. It could be at any time. I had already taken the time out off to have the surgery and, and we put it on hold because of the, the COVID and my job, like really understand. They were so, so cool about it, which I, I, I love them for that. So uh, I had the surgery. Um, the surgery, I think my mom said it, it. It didn't seem like it was too long. I believe it was like, she just said it didn't seem like it was too long. I can't tell you how long it was, but um, I just went to sleep and woke right back up, you know? Um, when I woke up, though, I couldn't catch my breath. And uh, it was just really hard for me to catch my breath. And, 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 and finally, they put some type of machine that blew out some type of steam like a like a not like an air purifier but like a um humidifier and it and 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 it you know it made me feel better and I stopped coughing and stuff like that I guess because my throat was dry and everything um oh but yes I did have to have an endoscope and uh, a COVID test before I had the surgery I Sorry, I had left that out. But um, other than that, um, my recovery was hard. I couldn't, I'm just be honest with you. Um, it's this funny feeling. And I don't know what it is. People say it's gas, okay? Ooh, the bad gas, bad gas. People say it's gas. It Gas don't feel like that. I don't know what, I don't know what that was. I'm quite sure it was gas, but gas don't feel like that. I'm sorry, baby. I am really sorry. Gas don't feel like that. It, 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 it was pain. It wasn't painful. You know, after you're giving birth to kids, it wasn't painful like that. It, it, it was just very uncomfortable and just very uncomfortable feeling, you know? So... You couldn't have anything to drink after the surgery. Mouth was dry, lips was dry, throat was dry. I was just dried out. Nurse did tell me you can recover quicker, and you know you just get and get out, walk that gas out. And I didn't. I don't like being uncomfortable. I do not like being uncomfortable. So I went and I just started doing my rounds, doing my rounds. Everybody was just so proud of me. They was like, yeah, you're doing good. Not a lot of people do that. They just lay in the bed. And I was like, I don't like this feeling of gas. This feeling is so-called gas. So I'm just going to walk around and, and bring it down. So I did all that. And um, oh, mind you, to top this surgery off to make it better than what it really is, <laughs> I caught my period the day before the surgery. So, hello. But anyways, <clears throat> it's too much information, but y'all have to know that to show how much very uncomfortable I was. So, I had the surgery and uh, I couldn't eat that whole entire day. So, I did my walking, went to sleep, woke back up, did another round of walking, went to sleep, got my vitals, da da da, da. So, you know, in the hospital, you really can't get no good sleep because people are always knocking on your knocking on your door and stuff like that you know so um the next day came and the doctor came to speak to me personally he said i need you to get out of bed and i want you to sit up in the chair try to get up and sit up in the chair and, and um in about an hour we'll get you something to eat oh i was so so happy so happy they gave me something to eat Oh, and my, mind you, I, my mouth was so dry. You know, those little swab tips. The nurse came and got me and just put a little bit of water in there. And, Baby, but I didn't do nothing. So I just wet my lips with it. I just wet my lips with it. <laughs> well, at least that, like, I put it on my gums and stuff like that. Well, uh, at least that got all that out of there. You know, that dryness and stickiness. But um, they sent me a tray in and my first, I had water. What I really wanted was water because I felt like I was in the Sahara Desert for five days without anything. It didn't, it didn't go down well. I threw it up. And they gave me milk 
and they gave me cream of chicken soup and they gave me but without the chicken they gave me an orange popsicle and some grape juice that's what i had i didn't drink the milk because after my little water ordeal if i couldn't get down water i know i know doggone well i'm not going to be able to get down this milk so i just let the milk stay where it was at and so I tried to take the sips of water. They want you to take a few sips at a time, a few sips at a time. And I did that. I took a few sips at a time. And then um, I started to feel a little bit better after the whole water, after I threw the water up. I started to feel a little bit better. So I dug into the popsicle. Then I ate the, 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 drank the grape juice, which went down perfectly. And... I did my little walking around. So I thought I had to stay another night. So I just chopped up everything, cleaned myself up a little bit in the bathroom and laid back down and went to bed. I get a call later that evening and the doctor said, uh, are you think you ready to go? And I said, well, I guess, cause I was feeling a whole lot better than I was in. I said, I guess, yeah. And so he said, we're gonna get you ready to go and discharged. And I said, okay. Um, I got discharged, you guys, at like eight o'clock at night. I was out of there the following day. So that Friday, um, my fiance came and picked me up and I came home. Um, I was prepared with everything. So I had, and, and before I went and had my surgery, I already had um, purchased little four ounce cups and I use them little four ounce cups for everything. And also the little cups that they give you at the hospital to sip your water and stuff, ask for more. The nurses and everybody, they're gonna give you more. So ask for those too, so you won't run out because you're gonna need it to drink your protein shake. You're gonna need it to drink your water. You're also gonna need it um, to store your food in, like I did when I was on the parade stage. I, I, I put my tuna fish in there, my, my chicken salad, chick salad. Um, I also, uh, what else I put in there? Just everything I ate was in that little four ounce cup. Just know that. And I had, and my jello was in the four ounce cup and I had everything stacked up in the refrigerator like that. Um, I'm gonna tell you my favorite things during that time, which kept me sane, was uh, the Premier Protein Shake, the cake batter, the birthday cake one, and the, the, the chocolate Premier Protein. Also, the caramel and the chocolate um, uh, Fairlight. Those were so good. It, bomb. So I had those, um, and I couldn't drink a whole, you can't drink a whole protein shake. That protein shake was like, it went half, half. Each meal was like half in the beginning. Um, so like two weeks on the liquid diet and they gave you some liquid Vicodin, which uh, made your gas pain feel better, I'm gonna tell you that. But it's addictive, so don't, don't do <laughs> Did the doctor tell you to have, can I get a, can you want a refill? Tell them no, believe me, take it from me. Cause that liquid Viking in man, I tell you, it had me like just feeling so much better. The gas pain was gone. I was feeling good, but I, when it was time for me to have a refill, I told him no. My recovery, my recovery is fine. I think I have four incisions. Um, in the video, well, not the video, uh, in the picture where, wherever it may pop up, um, you can see where my incisions were. Um, and you can see the weight as well. I weighed 230 something pounds after surgery. Um, before I started surgery, I was like 260, 265 pounds, um, which you can also see up there. Um, many of you came here probably because you've seen my TikTok where I uh, showed uh, my VSG transformation. Um, so you can look at, you can look at that and then, um, see where I came from. Those are, it's more pictures on there, but these are the pictures. Um, how I feel, I feel great. 
Um, I, as soon as I got the green light to exercise, I was there. So I started exercising in March. I was walking because, you know, you have to walk after the surgery. Um, <clears throat> but I started working out in March and I was still walking. Um, uh, I was waiting for the doctor to tell me that I can do strenuous exercises. And when he told me I could, I started it. And I haven't stopped since. And I am a gym aholic uh, now. And I'm, I'm quite ha proud of that, you know. Um, and I know because I'm, I'm a woman, I'm, I'm a certain age. So I know um, in order to maintain the body that I have now, I have to continue. Um, I have to continue working out, I have to continue eating right, making smart food choices, being mindful of the things that I eat and how I eat and how slow I eat. Um, I still, it's, 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 it's almost been a year since I had the surgery, but I still um, wait 30 minutes to drink something because I don't want to get hungry again. And, but, and, and you know, when they do the surgery, they tell you they cut out the part that makes you hungry. Uh-uh. Uh, in the beginning it did, but you can, you get that back, you know, as your stomach grows. Um, but, um, if I really don't, I don't have no regrets of having a surgery. I could tell you that you, you're going to burp a lot. So just warn your spouse, you're going to be burping. And, and farting a lot, you know, warning that. Oh, and if you hadn't suffered for constipation for, yeah, the first week, that Saturday, was it that Saturday or that following Saturday? Y'all, I had the worst constipation before I ever had in my life. And I like this doctor because he lets you text him. I texted him and I said, hey, I can't poop. What should I do? He had me run to the the Walgreens, which I could hardly make it there because I was in so much pain from the constipation. I got, he told me to get the Miralax powder, take that, get the Docalax suppository, take that and two fleet enemas. It came right out, right out. Tell y'all, it came right out and I was just so relieved. And happy. I remember that I got in the shower and I just laid in the bed like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, yeah, did all that. Well, anyways, but um, those are the parts that I really didn't too much like was the gas, what everybody tells you. Um, my number one priority though was not to get dehydrated. So just keep that in mind. If you, you water is not going down good or anything like that, um, drink Gatorade, sugar free Gatorade. Um, and, and and try to keep keep your in, your water in because that is so hard to do. Um, but just keep sipping throughout the day, sit and let it just go down, uh, and just let it go down. You know how you just let it lay on your tongue and let let it go down like that. You know, certain waters is just nasty, like spring water. After mm -mm, not gonna be able to do it. Um, oh, only thing I regret about this surgery is I wish I could have did it sooner. That's what everybody say. I waited until my 40s to actually have this surgery. Um, I wish I could have did it a little bit earlier um, because, you know, I think I would, I think, I think I, I would have been be, be a lot more further in life than I am now. I hate to say it, but I wish I could have did it a lot sooner. Um, the woman in those pictures that you saw, um, that was not the true me. You know, uh, I was constantly looking at my phone, looking at clothes I like and stuff I want to do, but I just couldn't do it in that body I was not comfortable in. And um, that's just how I felt. This is just how I felt about myself. And, and, and I wanted to be the woman I always wanted to be. And now that I am, I'm happy. I don't regret having this surgery. Um, although I, it was some ups and downs, like with any surgery, um, I'm doing fine. I learned how to eat. I learned how to chew my food slowly. I know what my body needs and what it don't need. And I also know what workouts work for me and how to maintain myself. And 
I just feel like, you know, if you're thinking about doing BSG surgery, go ahead and do it. Um, it'll be the best thing you ever did in your life. Some people go through some things with the surgery, life-threatening things sometimes, but just do your research. I looked at YouTube videos all the time about VSG leading up to the VSG. I looked at looked at YouTube videos after the VSG to see how girls were progressing and things like that. Yeah, so my starting weight was 265 pounds. And now today I weigh 165 pounds. I fluctuate between 165 and 160. And um, I'm gonna continue to try to lose some more weight. Maybe get down to 155, but right now I'm very happy at 165, 160. Um, and I plan on maintaining this weight for the rest of my life. Yeah, but anyways, I just want to thank you for listening to me and I hope that my experience with VSG, um, you can get some, you know, information on it, you know, that I gave you some good information. I hope so. Um, if you have any questions or would like to know more information about VSG, you can just um, comment down in the comments section. And I just want to thank you all for watching. Just like, comment, and subscribe. And I see you guys later. Bye. Mm -hmm.